friends and family of the Seafield Tabernacle. Welcome to this another Bible study from your host, Pastor Horace Forbes. Today we continue the theme, Believer's Course of Action, Part 4. Today we'll be examining Risen with Christ. Turn with me to Ephesians. To Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Pastor Paul, what do you read for me? Please? Thank you very much, Sir Forbes. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is alive, shall appear, then shall he also appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you then be risen, risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. And that's a good thought for us to begin with. And so as we go into our Bible study today, just pray that you open up your mind and your understanding to the word of God. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for your word. The word that can never get old, that can never get stale. It's your word. And so, Father, we pray that you would just bless and that you would just help your people to understand as they listen to the man to, to the pastor presenting the Bible study you'll open up their understanding and not only open their understanding but open up their appetites Lord for your word please Jesus we pray and I just want to pray particularly for those who are struggling at this time struggling Lord to meet certain requirements, so struggling to do certain things, which seems right. Pray that you would stand by them this afternoon and that you would help them to understand and to be able to do your work. Bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we hand over to Pastor, I'm just going to invite you to like share and subscribe to the channel and just continue to watch us listen to us week after as we come to you week after we pass the balls over thank you very much sister forbes and we continue to look on the theme which is very important my brothers and and sisters the course of action that the believers should be involved in and today we'll be looking at the particular word, risen with Christ. And we have been dealing with the letter R. We look at the word ruin, mm. rescue, redeem, mm. reconcile, and rooted. And last week we look at the word rooted, rooted, re rooted and built up. In him, Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 to 7. Rooted means to be firm and fixed and well established in the Lord. And this is what we are all about as we present the word of God. And as we study together that believers can be rooted, grounded, and established in the faith and therefore to be rooted it means to uh, to receive christ as the anointed as we discuss prophet revealing god's will for the church and the word christ is mentioned eight times in this particular uh chapter and four times in the four verses uh, that we read so it's not only to receive Christ, 
but to receive Jesus as Savior because he's our Savior and a substitute. Yes, he's our substitute that he died in our stead and to receive him as a sacrificial lamb. And John was able to say, Behold the Lamb of God who taken away the sins of the world. And to receive him as Lord, as the sovereign King of kings and Lord of lords. And therefore, the NIV says, particular chapter, uh, Colossians 3 verse 1, Since you have been risen or raised with Christ, NIV does not read that I put if, but the since you then have been raised with Christ. And it is very important for recognize mm -hmm. and to realize and to appreciate the position that you and I are in. Mm -hmm. And the word risen means to ascend from the grave coming from the grave it refers to god's raising of the physical dead believer into spiritual life in christ he has raised us from deadness to spiritual life in the lord jesus christ so it brings about a spiritual union with Christ. Now we are related with him. And this union is vital with Christ and uh, the believers. Now the believer has an exalted position. Your position is exalted and therefore it is in Christ. And Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ but I'm using the word I was and you were crucified with Christ nevertheless I live and how can a dead person live but it is because of Christ who lives in us he makes us to be a what alive and therefore we are alive in the Lord Jesus Christ he is crucified you were crucified, yet you are living. And as Romans 6, verse 6 said, the old man is crucified. The new man is now alive, and the new man is in Christ Jesus. So the believers are not living, but it is Christ who lives in the believers. A song we always sing, you ask me, how I know he lives. He lives here within my heart. So the believers are living in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want you to remember you were dead. All of us were dead. But now you are alive in Christ Jesus. And as uh, Paul said, I was crucified mean I was dead with Christ but now I am alive through the Lord Jesus Christ so the first thought that we'll be looking at today is the believers are now living in comfort so the of the believers are living comfortable because your life is hid with Christ in God according to what verse verse a uh, verse she said, you are dead and your life, the life that, that you are now living, it is hid with Christ and God. So therefore, being alive in Christ brings comfort. It brings consolation and cheers to the heart of every believer. We can live in luxury of his grace. It is the cause of the grace of God. Yes, we can live in the exercise of his grace and mercy and love because God has a special love for the church. God loved us with an everlasting love. 
we now live in the flesh by the faith of the Son of God who loves you and he gave himself for you and he gave himself for you when he died upon the cross for our sin. So Paul said also, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Galatians 2 verse 21. So it is not the comfort of the believers. Let me say it again. It is not the comfort of the believers, but the grace that comes from Christ gives the believers comfort. God, through the Lord Jesus Christ, makes the believers comfortable in the Lord Jesus Christ because the risen believers see themselves living in a state of depending on Christ. And as Paul said, not I, but Christ who lives within me. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. So the risen Christ, the risen believer, has a relationship to Christ in terms of personal attachment to his lordship. We are attached permanently to him because he is our Lord. As I said, uh, I mean, uh, that Christ is the sovereign, is the king, and is the Lord of Lord. And we are attached, yes, to him. So the risen Christ now lives in us and he wants us to serve him in spirit and in truth. He calls us and saves us and lives in us for a particular uh, purpose. So the believers who are in Christ now live ah, with him in his resurrected life. When Christ died, we died. When he was buried, we were buried with him. When he arose, we were raised with him. And when he ascended into heaven, we were ascended with him. Hallelujah. And now he's seated in heaven. And you and I are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And I wonder, Paul is saying, if he then be what? Risen with Christ. See those things which are above. We are cursed what? Seated on the right hand of God. Our believers, we are there with him. When he shall come, we shall come with him. Because those who died in the Lord, the Bible said they are absent from this life and they are right. present with the Lord. So when he shall return, then the believers shall return uh, with him. Christ and his strength live within us. Yes, he became the source of our life, the center of everything. And we should center our heart and our mind on him. Since then, you are risen with Christ. There's a command. Seek those things which are above. In Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17 said that Christ may dwell in your heart. And that word dwell means he wants to uh, be on the throne of your heart. He wants to, to rule your heart. He doesn't want to be a visitor, but he wants to dwell within your heart by faith that you be rooted and grounded in love. Yes, he wants to take up a permanent resident yes. and to become president of your life. But the second thing I want us to look on, not only believers are not living in comfort, and the believers should be comfortable in the Lord. But secondly, believers are not living in communion. Because we can commune, we can talk, we can reason with the Lord. Believers can now have a fellowship with God. No one in the Bible said, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, what? We have what? Fellowship. 
and this is very important brethren now that we are related to him we must have what fellowship with god and paul is saying since you are risen with christ seek endeavor in your heart and mind to achieve and this is privilege that we have been with the risen christ it comes by the resurrection of christ and that we can commune with him because we are justified you were justified god declares you to be righteous you are righteous in the sight of god and not only justified but you are sanctified you are a sanctified people and because you are sanctified and set apart god is saying you belong to me and he set you apart and praise god not only not only you are justified and sanctified and we shall be glorified to be put in honor make you worthy and he shall say to you well done good and faithful servant so therefore then believers are not living in a life of communion a life of fellowship and therefore we must see those things parts and which are above the things that are heavenly so secondly we must make heaven our scope and aim heaven is my goal it is my aim and thirdly we must seek the favor of god from above because he is above he is in heaven and he is looking down upon us and he is expecting us to communicate with him and fourthly we must keep up our communion our communication with him yes we must talk to him because he is our father jesus christ came and he has broken down the middle wall of partition and we can enter into the throne of grace freely and therefore brethren we must keep our communion with god and fifthly we must make it our constant business to be properly uh, qualified for the heavenly bliss as a servant of the lord we are not working to go to heaven but we know that we will be rewarded one day and in our next talk next time will be we will be rewarded the servant of the lord will be rewarded when our blessed lord shall come so the reason is christ sits at the right hand of god and therefore he is our best friend and he's the head of the church and he knows us he sees us and no wonder he can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities so whatever condition you might be going through whatever pain you might be having maybe a land problem maybe family problem maybe husband problem or maybe you are sick but you can commune with the lord he was exalted to the highest position in heaven he has gone before to secure for us the heavenly happiness and what a day that is going to be when our blessed lord shall come no one they said let not your heart be troubled he believe in god believe also in me because what in my father's house there are many mansions so therefore brethren let us live in comfort let us continue to communicate with him the last thing i want us to look on is the believers are now living in confidence we have confidence in the lord jesus christ mm -hmm. believers can now live in confidence mm -hmm. in hope mm -hmm. and assurance mm -hmm. we know that when we die we know where we are going 
But the question I may ask you, do you know where you are going when you die? And therefore, I don't want you to, to doubt your salvation. We must have this confidence in the Lord and assurance that when we die, we know where we are going. Now that you are risen with Christ, he said, set your affection mm -hmm. on things exactly. above, things that are heavenly. We must love heavenly things. Yes, our mind should be centered there, particularly, in, especially in these day, last days, mm -hmm. because we are drawing nearer and nearer mm -hmm. to our blessed home. And to see heavenly things, it is set your affection okay. on them. And therefore, believers must acquaint themselves with them. Heavenly things, believers might us esteem them above all other things. Sometimes we are so concerned about material things, about the house that we live in, the type of car that we have, and we worship these things. But brethren, God alone should be worship because you see when you die you're gonna leave it mm -hmm. that big house that you have you're gonna leave it that m big money that you have you're gonna leave it you're gonna leave it when you die so we should esteem the things of heaven more than other things and believe and not prepare for the enjoyment when we go there Hallelujah to Jesus. When you go to heaven, what an happy time that is going to be a part of if it was in this world, we have hope. We have men most miserable. And David said in Psalm 27, verse 4, one thing have I what? Desire of the Lord. And that will I seek after. My question to you today what are you seeking after what are you longing for what is your greatest achievement in life is it material gain or seeking after the things of god this is to be spiritually minded and in romans chapter 8 verse 6 to be spiritually minded is life 